So I'm going to have to do this free-handed because my stand that I made for my first phone that I took videos with uh, is not the same size as this one and I really don't have any way of holding it so I apologize if we're shaky. What we're working with here is a Cummins uh, PT fuel pump down in the basement, my workshop. Uh, I figure this here is the best place to keep the light steady versus the sun beating down on us. What we're going to work on is to replace the button uh, to increase the fuel pressure. I have searched high and low and could not find anything about how to do this. So I asked around, was told by a few guys, we've got a spare pump here. So we're going to try it out on the spare pump before I go and do it on my real pump. And one thing that I definitely agree with is it takes all of 10 to 15 minutes tops to pull one of these pumps off. It's better off to take it off the truck and do it. Uh, having done it now myself a couple of times just to get in the practice of how to do this, uh, that's definitely what I would agree with. If you ever need to adjust your idle, and what you're going to do is take this bolt out, this little plug out, and then there's a screw underneath here. Um, can't do it with the truck running though, Cummins does make a special tool to do it with the truck running. But this bowl here, this cone, is full of fuel while the truck is running. And in fact, this pump here that's been off the truck for months uh, was actually all still full of fuel. And I turned it around just as I got down here in the basement and I dumped even more fuel out of it that I thought was out. Uh, another way to work on these pumps that some people talk about is down here in this cover. I don't know if it's showing up very well or not, but there's a little ball under here, and this is where your oops, sorry, this is where your throttle lever would be, and uh, you know, you, as you turn this, yeah, your throttle up, down, whatever. Uh, but evidently, if you drill out this button, there, or ball bearing, there's another piece under there. But I have definitely been cautioned against that. So, what you do? And I've got these all loosened up so that we don't have to uh, waste too much time. And yes, I've had this pump apart a couple of times now just to train myself before I put it in a video. So you're going to pull out the bolts. Uh, there is some safety wire that will run through these. Um, you might even have a security screw in yours. Uh, got rid of that for this demonstration. Uh, so you might need a special tool. There is a gasket under here, so I did have to pry this out the first time. Um, I'm sure that's a gasket I'll have to get. When we look at the bottom side of this, you see that it's curved right over here. Uh, that lines up with the uh, another part of the pump, so there's really only one way that this cone will go on. So. We'll set that off to the side, and here's what we're looking at. When you take that little plug out of the back of the cone, and I hope this focuses, there we go, here is your screw to adjust your idle. The snap ring that everybody talks about, and underneath here are a couple of springs. When I was first talked to about this, it, made, it was made to sound as though there was a huge amount of spring pressure behind this thing and uh, parts were, could possibly go flying everywhere. Alright, if it's in the truck and if you don't take care, parts are going to go flying everywhere. But in reality here, we're going to push down. See, I'm pushing down on that with my fingernail uh, and it's moving just fine. So, let's see if I can do this one handed and hold the camera. Sorry if we go out of focus. We'll take our snap ring pliers uh, wow, trying to do this through a video screen, not cool. Alright, sorry if we get shaky, but I gotta look off to the side. Alright, we're in there, we're in the holes, and we're gonna bring it in. Yep, there we go. And just slowly start to work that out. Again, I'm doing this one-handed, so uh, now is when anticipating parts to go flying everywhere while well, I've got this being done one-handed. Yeah. 
so, so close. All right, we're going to have to put the camera down for a minute and uh, hold the pump, I think. So, pardon. Snap ring is out. We had to put the camera down for less than a minute. Uh, and as you can see, this is exactly how it came out. I did not even have to put this back on there. There is not a whole lot of spring tension. So we're going to put the snap ring off to the side. Remember, it is very important to keep your parts in order so they go back in the same order. Let's take a closer look down here. All right. I have seven shims on this little cap. And I'm going to try and back up to let it focus. And I'm sorry about that. So here we go. We're going to pull that off. And I'm not even going to play around with these shims. I'm just going to put it off to the side. But as you can see, they are really, really thin. Uh, if I didn't have my mic upstairs, I would go ahead and throw the mic on those to tell you just how thin they are. All right. After that, you've got a larger spring and there is a technical name for all these here sorry if I don't know it offhand but yes larger spring don't know if it matters which way it goes back in but I'm gonna try and keep it all in the same order okay now right here is your screw for adjusting your idle and if you can see down in there it's all part of another piece so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to lay the pump down to pull that out because the button is inside of there with a spring behind it and I'm not sure you know if it'll push the button out and leave all that stuff in there uh, but we're gonna go ahead turn this and lay it down hopefully no fuel comes dumping out on me again all right reach in there slow up what do you know I've got fuel dumping out already yay yay gotta be careful this is my reloading room too all right so I'm just slowly pulling this out all right of course you can't see down in the hole uh, but I can and the button is not down there. This is what we just pulled out. All right, it's just kind of uh, triangular shaped, if you will, and that's our button at the end. Now, you can just turn this right upside down to knock the button up. Stand that up so I stop dumping fuel. Oh, hey, we can kind of see through the camera now what's down in there. Kind of. There you go. That center, right there in that middle, that's where your fuel actually comes out of. And what that does is it presses against the button, which, look at there, there's another spring behind a button. Um, and what you're changing when you change the button is the size of this hole in the middle of the button. Uh, I do not know for certain if the the numbers that are on the buttons refer to you know like a CC type volume or something like that but there is a volume there and by changing that volume that's how you change the pressure okay so I'm gonna try and do this again one-handed come on to tap that out the problem is that there's a spring behind there with a little washer and it's a real pain to put that back in so that's why I want to just get this button out real easy like there we go it started stand it up and hopefully yep got it so let's put the button down off to the side we'll take a look down in there you see there's the spring and like I say there's a washer behind it uh, I, honestly, the first time I took this apart, I almost lost a washer. So right there are all your internal parts that are going to come out when you have to change or decide you want to change the button. Here's your button that you're changing. 
That's the face of the button. The back of the button, yes, the back is going to be always carved out like that for the spring. And let's see if it will focus on this long enough to show that this button in particular is number 30 and no it won't show but you can kind of start to see the difference in volume and of course the reinstall is just the reverse take your new button which I don't have a new button yet uh, I still don't know this pump is not the pump that came out of my truck I'm thinking I should take the pump out of my truck to verify what button I have before I just go ahead and buy a new button um, because I was once told that we had like a number 40 in the 939 series trucks I don't know if that's true or not but anyway uh, I did find a number 20 and a number 25 and even a 15 on eBay uh, they're $19.99 plus like $5 shipping something like that so it's really not bad um, but I was thinking about replacing my this 30 with a 20 and just kind of see hey what uh, what do we get so we're going to just slide this back in drops right down in there yep and see as soon as I turn it upside down it wants to fall out so to put the the this whole assembly this whole plunger assembly back in I'm going to lean lay down the the pump again so the pump down. Hopefully not going to lose too much fuel. And then we'll just slide the plunger in. Uh, preferably you would be doing this with a new button. Make sure everything is clean of course. Stand the pump back up. So now you see there it is all nice and springy. And just the reverse order. I'm going to place that spring back in. We're going to take the cap and all seven of those shims, which I have to assume those shims are creating some kind of pressure as well. Put those back on. And of course I'll have to do it one handed. Well, I mean, I'll have to put the camera down to put the snap ring back in. Put your cover back on. Uh, it's probably a wise idea to go ahead and replace this gasket with something. Um, even if they were reusable gaskets, well, many many times these pumps are so old that, uh, yeah, pretty easy process, pretty straightforward. Personally, I would say do it off the truck. It doesn't take that long to get the pump off the truck. Um, I've removed them before. Like I said, I think the longest one took me about 20 minutes, and that was one of the first times doing it. Uh, when this is in your truck, okay, it sits in your truck just like this. You know, this is the bottom, top. Uh, this back bolt right here is going to be a 12 point bolt. Uh, I believe it was a 12.716 shorty wrench, is what I used uh, to start it to break it free. When you get the wrench on there, you're going to look at it and you're going to curse my name. You're going to be like, no, that's not possible. Um, I have no room to move. There's less than an eighth of an inch to turn. It doesn't take much to get that thing started. Once it's broke free, it, it doesn't take maybe one or two times of hitting it with the wrench. And you can use your fingers to get that thing out. So, all right. That's what we got. I hope this helps some of you. Uh, thanks again.